like french fries, don't you? Those little ducks like french fries. You don't gotta run with it. We'll give you more. Oh, he's gonna wet it. Make it easier to eat. He's gonna wet it good. Oh, oh cute. Scared. There you go. He ain't scared. Better go wet that down. <laughs> Announcing their arrival. Watch him go. Got to get it before them geese get here. So when we were in Pound, Virginia recently, we noticed something that was pretty interesting. While we were driving through, looking for something else, we saw this mural. It definitely gets your attention for obvious reasons. To this mural, depicts Nancy Mullins Shores, a longtime midwife who delivered many of the town's residents in the 20th century. It was designed and painted by Lacey Hale, who's an Eastern Kentucky artist known for painting murals across central Appalachia, including one that got a lot of attention and controversy for its image of a possum and pokeweed. So what was this controversy over? Well, surprisingly, um, it seemed to release a lot of different feelings in different people. One was a lot of people thought that the possum was just an unintelligent low-level animal and why is it on the side of a building? Why did you pick that animal? And then of course we have the other side that you know possums are very important to this to the state in general. They eat a lot of things and do a lot of things that are important to keep things running smooth. The other problem was that pokeberries, which is depicted in this, are apparently, and I haven't looked into this, but this is what said they're toxic to possums. I don't know. I mean, that's not what I'm doing the story on, but that's just a little side note that I discovered in this from the lady that actually made the, the neat looking mural of Nancy. So Lacey Hale is probably most known for the No Hate in My Holler, a screen print she designed in 2017 that is spread across Appalachia on TV, shirts, tote bags, and even billboards. But I wanted to find out who is Nancy Mullins. So apparently she is what is called Granny Women or Granny Witches. I don't really know which one she would fall into. This isn't exactly my uh, you know, where my strengths lie. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know a lot more about it, but I'm just going to give you a brief rundown of what I do know. So she delivered, she claims to have delivered over a thousand babies and she was a midwife basically. And she knew, you know, everything there is to know about giving birth and, and how to do it safely within, you know, what she had means to do. And she didn't lose, um, any mothers and very few babies out of these thousand. The granny witches here definitely aren't like witches found elsewhere. They don't dress like witches. They don't, you know, do all that normal wearing hats, stroking black cats kind of thing. Basically, it just comes from our ancestors that came here from different cultures and different countries that brought a lot of their beliefs and folk magic, folk medicines, herbs, um, religion, just different things combined. And being in the App Appalachian Mountains, you're very secluded from doctors. And a lot of times when people were sick, baby was sick in the middle of the night, your husband had a severe pain in his stomach. The granny witches are who people went to. Personally, I live, I mean, I, I live right smack dab in the middle of hillbilly land. I mean, seriously, and I don't know any granny witches. Um, and I don't know any granny witches in the family or even going back in far in the family, but I know that they existed. They just aren't something that was part of our family that I'm aware of. But they basically use nothing but faith and herbs and things like that for healing. In the old days, people living deep in the Appalachian Mountains had to be very self-reliant. Granny women are who people went to for healing and magic. It was not easy to get a doctor and rarely could a doctor reach anyone in time to help them to get through an illness. Accidents happened and doctors were nowhere around. 
but there was always a granny close enough to fetch for help. Granny women knew their way of, around herbs and home remedies and also used witchcraft methods sometimes. It was not the modern Wiccan type magic, it was the magic of old world witchcraft passed down for generations by elders teaching their daughters and granddaughters. It was the healing magic that came from Ireland, Scotland, and many early settlers. Most grannies grew their own herbs. Every village or community in the mountains had at least one granny woman to run for do for help and healing. These women knew exactly which plant, herb, root, or bark would heal each malady or injury that came up. When the Irish and Scottish people began immigrating to America in the 1700s, they brought with them their own culture and traditions. So some of these traditions were from um, the ancient ones of Northern Ireland. Most of these immigrants were descended from Scottish and English families who colonized Ireland during the plantation of Ulster, which is an organized colonization in the 17th century. They're referred to as Scotch-Irish or Scots-Irish. Among the immigrants were the women who knew the ways of the old world witchcraft and herbs. Many of these immigrants settled in southern Appalachia and the Ozark Mountains. The women were healers and midwives and often their only practitioners of health care for the poor living in rural areas. They did not take payments for the healing. As with the settlers, they shared what they had. A gratitude for help and knowledge was often in the form of food, quilts, or other needed items, but it was, wasn't expected. These women became known as granny women. They relied heavily on herbal medicine. For instance, a regular remedy for whooping cough was made and bottled to give to the caretaker of the ill one. The granny would boil one ounce of fresh red clover blossoms in one pint of water then add one cup of honey. This was given to the child, one teaspoon twice a day until the cough cleared, if it did. Now, midwife and birth and babies, women who had children of their own were often called upon for birth and babies. Since they had gone through the process of giving birth, they were expected to be able to help other women in labor. These, lay, these midwives had no formal training. Over time, the midwives became more experienced and they were a great assistance when needed. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, granny women and their midwife skills were the main help for about half the births in southern Appalachia. Childbirth was a great concern and a dangerous time in the old days, and it was the granny women who played an integral role in seeing the baby and mother survive. When someone was sent to fetch granny, the granny woman would grab her bag, get on a mule or horse, and leave her own family often for days to care for women in labor. She often stayed a few days after the child was born to make sure the babe and her were getting on okay. The granny had her herb remedies in her bag and her rituals to perform to ensure a safe birth. One common ritual of the granny women attending a birth was to put an ax under the bed of the mother during labor. This was symbolic of cutting the pain. Also, if all the windows were open during labor, this was symbolic of opening the birth canal for easy delivery. Spells and charms were not looked on as odd or strange, and the settlers trusted their granny. It was not until 1923 that the per first professional training for midwives was established in Kentucky by Mary Carson Breckenridge. The Frontier Nursing Service with Breckenridge established is still in existence today. So when the settlers came in contact with Native Americans, a bond of respect and support was created for the most part. One of the most beneficial methods was shared was the Native Americans passing down their wisdom to some people of herbs and healing. The granny women brought old world healing methods and the Native American provided extensive knowledge beyond what they already knew. So they shared and trained each other and it was extremely beneficial for both sides. So grannies usually also practice divination, such as reading tea leaves, watching for signs and clouds, and other things. Witchcraft, as it was practiced in the old way by the ancients, still exists in some parts of Appalachian Mountains. It's passed down from generation to generation, and Granny knows instinctively which member of her family is the next healer, and she encourages that child to learn. So some people think that Witch, the granny witches is something bad to stay away from, yet it was with witchcraft and knowledge of granny women that saved many, many lives in the early days of the settlers and brought the new babies into the world. True witchcraft from the old world was based on healing, 
nothing else. So we wanted to see Granny Mullen's shores while we were in Pound, and we actually went all the way to her grave that is in Riley Mullen Cemetery. But once we got there, we couldn't make it up to where she's buried, and we were, we were really bummed out, but I didn't film it, um, video it, whatever, just because uh, it was kind of a stressful ordeal, and I sort of forgot, honestly. I was planning on, you know, doing a video once we got up there, but when we, we got there, and there's, it, it, it's really hard to explain, it was just very confusing, had private property signs, it was really a treacherous road getting up to it. We just scratched it, you know, we figured it wasn't important enough to to kind of go overboard with it, but we still wanted to give some credit to um, Nancy Granny Mullen Shores. She definitely is a reason why a lot of people are alive today. So rest in peace, Nancy, and thank you for your service. Thanks for joining us on the Hillbilly Files. We hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of information. We found it pretty interesting, so we knew someone out there would find it interesting too. And thank you so much for your support and everything you guys do to give us an outlet to do these stories. And until next time, Hillbilly's out. <laughs>